What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access. Today we're joined by Sess Crew. Appreciate you guys coming through. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Now, you guys are obviously on Strange Music, been doing lots of tours and recording with them for several years now, but you guys also have a different angle and slant from a lot of the artists because, for instance, of course, you guys remade and, and redid Rakim song with Juice. So for you guys, you know, you're highlighting and bringing a different uh, element to Strange and with the Rakim, Eric B and Rakim in particular, that's very uh, distinct and different for Strange. So why why is that something you guys were comfortable doing and then ended up doing? Um, the juice the juice thing. I guess that um, I just always wanted to rhyme over that beat. Okay. <laughs> um, that's that's kind of how it really started and then of course rhyming over that beat I'm hearing rock him in my head and I'm just sort of influenced by his his flow when I when I wrote that and so I, I basically wrote my rhyme to the thin air to a beat that didn't exist yet I wrote it you know or I wrote it to you know to, to know the ledge and um, and then brought that to seven and then he just sort of constructed it from there but uh, but yeah I don't know I just always wanted to rock over like something that that pace that that it had to it or whatever, and, uh, and yeah, and it was fun to do that and to like throw you know a little homage to to rock him, right? For making a classic, you know. And for for people that you know the newer generation or people that aren't familiar with him, what made rock him and still makes him such an important artist in your guys' opinion for rap? Um, well, I think more than anything, uh, and I had to go back. I wasn't, I wasn't as well, well versed in hip hop when Rakim was popping and having, and having his heyday. I wouldn't say, but um, he was, you know, basically he was Nas of the time. You know what I mean? Of his time, he was that dude who uh, took rhyming to a new level and uh, was rhyming in ways that no one had heard before, and 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 will outwrap a lot of guys today, in my opinion. Right. You know, for all the same characteristics and same attributes that he has. So, uh, that, I mean, that's why Rakim was important. He was dope then, and he's like remains dope. You know what I mean? Just stands the test of time. And, so, yeah. and one thing, uh, Juice is a little different because he does cuss in that record, but most of his songs had no Not profanity. Yep. No, yeah. No, no profanity. Yeah, most yeah. of them. Mm -hmm. So, given that he's so respected and he's looked at as a super hardcore lyricist and super hardcore, but he almost never cussed. Like, what's your guys' take on that? Is that ironic? Does, what does that teach you or show you? I mean, it's a skill. Yeah. I think that, uh, you know, from a writing standpoint, words are all, words all always have their uses. And so, I, I'm, if I'm cursing, I'm thoughtfully cursing. And so, if he's not cursing, he's thoughtfully not cursing. You know what I'm saying? And so, he, it's a, it's something that, you know, I have a, a handful of rhymes where I, where I don't curse. Um, that are on our Sess Crew records, right. um, but then I have some rhymes where I'm cursing a blue streak at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, <laughs> sorry, uh, yeah. sorry, shit. But um, it, yeah, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a definite skill if you can put together a, a rhyme that that still gets people going or whatever, and um, and there's no, you know, you're not leaning on curses. Um, that's that's dope, you know. And 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 I, and I hear a lot of people. I've heard Lupe Fiasco and some other people really successfully um, do that and it's, it's, it's dope when, you know yeah, and I think it's pull that off it, it gets also to not being necessarily tied into a certain thing and one thing with you guys that I've always thought was interesting is how you kind of reinvent the name and what Sess Crew stands for over for the sure. years mm -hmm. sure, whether it's on songs or projects or even just what you guys are talking about so how and when did you guys get the idea to, to change what it means or to have that as part of your evolution as artists I don't know. I guess just as we, I guess just as we made albums, huh? Okay. Yeah, it was a long time ago yeah, though. Um, time ago. When we were probably in, you know, in the 2002, yeah. 2003, sometime around there, we started to. There was there was one acronym for Cess, and then we started to come up with multiple acronyms. Because on the on the first record we had we had like a song cost effective strategy, mm -hmm. and that was a, a, a like a a follow up acronym. The you know, yeah, there's a whole bunch. That's when we started doing it. Is when we started making that first record that came out in 2004. So, yeah, I, mean, there's, I don't even know how many. Yeah, you know, it's got stock Yeah, there's a huge, huge pile of them. Well, there it was, and there it is. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, well, thanks for coming through the Cess Crew. Thanks we appreciate your time. Appreciate it. It's a unique access. Cess Crew's in the building. Appreciate it. All right.